Hey human people, it is Rachel with Terea Yoga and I'm excited to share today a yoga class about rocking the crow pose. So if you have never done crow pose or have tried and not felt comfortable, this is for you. And if you love crow pose, I will also make sure there's something for you to learn from this video. This is a video that you could repeat over and over and progress a little further each time. So don't be afraid at some point during the crow section to drop out and just watch or listen or keep practicing the version that you feel comfortable with. So last week we released our first video on this channel and the response was really sweet um, and exciting. So I'm happy to be back with you again today. And um, if you hear really cute singing in the background, that's my daughter. And the singing is usually a good sign. So don't worry about it. All right, so what you need for crow pose is a balance of ferocity and freedom, like just like a generous, hey, we'll see what happens um, attitude. I'm gonna locate this fierce feeling in the hands and wrists, the, the forearms, keeping that really strong, and in the little belly. And it's more in the chest that you need to just sink down and let go and open up. And we'll practice it in a few other poses before we get to crow. Before we start, I would like you to take a seat that's comfortable for you and close your eyes. Take a moment to feel your breath just as she is today. Feel your contact with the floor below you. Feel any sensations of tension, vibration, warmth or coolness in your body. And now let an image bubble up of something that you feel strongly about. Something that you would like to support or achieve. It could be a wish you have, or even just a wish for clarity in a certain area. Something that you could be fierce about. And for me, the first image that arises is my daughter. but it could be really anything that's important to you that lights a little bit of a fire under you when you think about it. And let this be a motivation for you today, both in the sense of giving energy towards this, but also letting this give you energy, this image. Slowly open your eyes. Namaste. Welcome to yoga. And before I go to the mat, I want to show you the hand and wrist movement that we're going to be focusing on today up close. I'm going to take off my cozy sweater. And I brought a visual aid today. It's a cutting board. So that's why it's super scratched up, but I think it will work well for what I want to show you. So the way you use your hands is really important in crow and in downward dog and anything where your weight is on your hands in yoga. A lot of people have wrist pain when they do yoga, especially if they are new or have been away for a while. And these are the actions that have helped me to overcome that, um, but they're cumulative. So they help immediately and then they help more if you practice them over time. So practice them over time. Start with like a floppy hand. This is my floppy downward dog hand. And now we're gonna transform it. You can do this on the floor along with me. So first you spread your fingers really wide, like rays of the sun, like as far as you can. And then claw your fingertips into the floor. And hopefully you can see my fingertips losing blood supply. Now what usually happens when you do this is your fingers pop up, like it's really like a curve there. And often this joint right here, the base of the pointer finger also pops up. 
So then your hand is kind of, kind of round. And what you really want, I'm going to show it this way too, is that this joint is grounded like that. Now, so you want to claw the fingertips, but then press down the base of the pointer finger. So let's go through the steps again. Release your wrists, put them on the ground, your hands. Spread the fingertips, really bright sun. Claw the fingertips into the floor or mat, and then press the root of your pointer finger, or you could say the inner corner of your hand, down. And if you do all these things, you will probably start to feel some muscles activate in your forearm. I certainly do. And one of my favorite things about this last one, when you press the inner hand down, I don't know if you can see it, my shoulder moves. Yeah, it's like automatically moving back a little bit. You can exaggerate that. Pull your shoulder blade back to really engage it and press from the center of your back all the way into the center of your hand. All right, relax. I'm going to put away my fancy cutting board and we'll go to the mat. Enjoy the class. So let's meet at the front of our mats. Make sure your feet are parallel. And then we're going to start by synchronizing our breath with our arms. So important here is the breath is actually more important than the movement, movements that you're doing. So let your breath begin first, and then the movement starts, and your movement is oriented to the speed of the breath. So start your inhale, and then just a split second after, start your arms moving up. And then when your exhale is ready to start, let that go first, and then move your arms down. Repeat this a few times. So inhaling, and then breath leads. If I say breath leads, I mean also literally your breath begins a moment before the movement. This helps make sure that we're not forcing our breath to match the speed that we are moving or that our teacher is moving. Feel your feet on the floor, one more time up and down. All right, now come on down to all fours and make sure your wrists are right under your shoulders. And we're gonna start right away with the clawing principle, a little ferocity in the arms. So spread your fingers, claw the fingertips, and then root the inner corner of the hands. Spread the fingers, claw the fingertips, root the inner corner of the hands and see if that makes your arms feel hopefully much stronger and more stable. And now we're gonna floss the sh shoulders, move your chest up and down without bending your arms. And you'll feel how your shoulder blades move on your back. So there's these big plates of bone on the back of your body and they're gonna move apart and then towards each other. And now stop at the bottom when the shoulder blades are really on your back. This is how you want them to be in crow pose. Keep them like this and we're gonna do cat and cow. So inhale, look forward, and exhale, belly button to the ceiling. Two more times. Very nice. All right, so for the class today, I was inspired for this next sequence by a yoga class by Elise Jones. So she's got a Vashistasana flow and then a downward dog flow that I am borrowing from her. So thank you, Elise Jones, for this. This starts also in table pose. Claw your fingers. Press the root of the first finger down, the inner corner of the hand. And now stretch your left foot back and your left arm to the sky. I'm going to do it now facing to the side. So this is a variation of Vashistasana. And now come back to tabletop. Stretch your right foot back and your right arm up. And come back to the middle. Let's repeat that on each side. So inhaling open and exhaling table. Inhale and exhale. 
Now that is variation one, and there are three more in increasing difficulty, and also increasing pressure on your hand and wrist. You choose your variation, so you might repeat this one the whole time, you might try them all, it's up to you. So the next one starts in a plank pose. You can do it with your legs fully stretched or set your knees down if you need to. Spread your fingers, claw your fingertips, and press the inner edge of the hand down. With your next inhalation, tip both heels to the right, left arm to the sky. Exhale, middle. Both heels to the left, right arm to the sky, and look up. And back to the middle, exhale. Repeat, or you might be doing version one. And to the middle. And inhale. And down. All right, variation three. I'll see if I can do it one time with my knees up. It starts with a chaturanga push-up. Nope, knees down. And then, heels to the side, lift up, but then lift your top leg. So now you're on one hand and one leg. Really claw those fingers. Come back to the middle. Chaturanga push-up. Tip both heels to the left. Right arm to the sky. Right leg to the sky. Well, not all the way. And come back to the middle. All right, we're gonna go on to the next one because there is one more variation. Chaturanga push-up. Turn to the side. Left and leg and arm up. And now, both hands down, but leave your left leg in the sky. I'll be right there. Put your knee down, and with the left leg in the air, one push-up. Oh, you don't have to put your knee down. And then both feet, turn to the side, right leg up, turn to the front, one leg in the air, the right leg, and if you need to, like me, set your left knee down for the push-up, and come back up, plank pose. And for a rest, come into downward facing dog. Knees bent if you need for the first downward dog of the day. And breathe. What's up, girl? Oh, I got a message. I know. Close. There you go, girl. Okay. Downward dog. And then walk your dog. Walk a little bit, bending one knee and then the other. It's a nice massage for the feet and the calves. And now come to tabletop pose again. And we're gonna reactivate the fingers and hands. This is also really useful for dog and for the flow we're about to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's my daughter. Um, spread your fingertips. Press them down and ground the inner hand. So, we're going to go back into dog, hips up and back. I need to step my feet back a little bit from table, you might also. Legs can be stretched, but don't sacrifice the length and ease in your back for that. So if your lower back feels a little pressure when you stretch your legs, bend your legs. It's not a contest. Inhale your right leg up to the sky, three-legged dog. Exhale your chin towards your nose. That does not make sense. Your knee towards your nose. And then slowly lower it towards the mat. You can rest on the mat if you need, or you keep it just above. Lift it back up and stretch the back. Now we're gonna cross the body. So bring your right knee to your outer left arm, high up, and lower it down. You can tell this is really easy for me. And back up. And then to the back. Now the outer right arm. And lower. And back up. And to the back. And now to the middle. And a lunge pose. So if your foot doesn't land under your knee, I would recommend you either pull it with your hand or you know, get up a little bit, get it there. Step your back foot back. Inhale, arms up to the sky. Feel length from the fingertips over the left side of your body, left side of your stomach, all the way to the back heel. And take the moment to circle your wrists, shake them out a little bit. 
Get ready for the other side. At least jump. Not my fault. No, I'm kidding. Inhale, plank. Exhale, dog. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, knee towards your nose. And now just breathe freely while you lower and lift. Three-legged dog across the body to the upper right arm. And then lower, elevator down, elevator up, to the back, to the outer left arm, lower, lift, rah, and back. And now forward, place the foot, adjust as needed, inhale the arms up. So remember I said free in the shoulders, let's practice that here. Stretch your fingertips forward and then pull them back so that your shoulder moves back relative to your breastbone. And then let's cactus arms and open that a little bit. See how far you can move your arms back with still a feeling of opening in the front. Beautiful. All right, step to the front of your mat. I'll come up here. I know my head's gone. Yeah. Are you breathing? Can you breathing up? Inhale the arms up. Exhale, bend your knees, touch the floor. Inhale, look forward. And exhale, claw your fingers as you place your hands. Ground the inner hand, plank pose. Inhale here, exhale lower. Inhale, cobra or upward facing dog. Now here again, shoulders back and your breastbone, the center of your chest forward. Or you can say heart forward, it sounds cozy. Open your heart. And exhale, downward facing dog. <sighs> inhale, look between your hands. Claw the fingertips, press the inner hand down. Exhale, bend your knees and jump or walk forward, feet to your hands. Nice. Inhale, look forward, hands on your hips. Exhale, activate the muscles that go all around your lower back. So back, sides, front. And then inhale up. Exhale, hands together in front of your heart. Close your eyes and feel. Now, step your feet really far apart. Gonna give the arms a little break and work instead on fire in the belly, active lower belly, and an open chest. So from the side, what that looks like really is just make my clothes kind of flat. That this is moving in and gathering power. So you can think drawing your hips and your ribs together. But here, your breastbone's moving forward and your shoulders are moving back. And there needs to be a real sense of ease, otherwise you can't do that. If you're like this, then you can't. It's not, it's not good. And this is often how I end up in crow, and the pose is more successful if the belly is really fierce and the heart is really free. All right, so let's do that. Feet wide apart, turn your right foot to point to the right. Warrior two, your right knee is over your right ankle. Now move the lower belly, like between your belly button and your pubic bone, move that back so your lower back gets longer. And then lift the shoulders up and back to really open the chest. Stretch your arms and look to the side. And now you can try to balance it out. Okay, did I lose the belly? So I'm just totally in a back bend now, then activate your belly more. The lower ribs and the hips towards each other. If you feel crunched, open your chest more. With your next exhalation, set your right elbow on your right knee. Stretch your right arm towards me. And now pull your shoulder back. It's again to integrate the shoulder and open up the front of your chest. Open to the sky. And you may want to stay here, or you can stretch your arm next to your ear. For some people, this feels like crunched in the neck, and then you should go back. It's up to you. Now again, activate your low belly. Open your chest. And now stretch your right arm to me. Surprise! Take a deep breath. Or three. All right, and now look down. Shift, uh, left hand on your hip, shift forward, half moon pose. 
Your right hand is less than a meter in front of your right foot and to the side. Now, for some of you, this is too much of a challenge for the leg. And then you should put your hand on a block or a chair or a table or a handy wall. Take a deep breath here. And then, if you feel comfortable, turn your chest to the sky and stretch your left arm up and your gaze. The back foot toes should be pointing towards me. Now place both hands on your table, chair, block, or floor. Ah. And turn your hips to the floor so that your back toes are now pointing straight down. Look forward. Standing split. So you can either stay like this or if you've got it, let your head drop and your back heel rise up. And at a certain point, you can also start to let your back foot turn out a little bit. And set your foot down and come up to standing. Side two. Turn your left foot out. Lower belly moves towards the back. And your shoulders move back. So you're really trying to feel fierce in your belly and free in your chest. Look over your left arm and breathe. And now again, remember, what is that thing that you feel so fierce about? The question, the dream, the person or project, and let that activate your belly a little more, that desire, positive desire, not attached desire, but really like loving desire for something to come to fruition. Now set your elbow down. Fingertips towards me on the right arm, and then pull your shoulder back. Lift the fingertips and your gaze to the sky, and then if it feels good, arm next to your right ear. Try it. Now you'll probably see, if you look at me, I like to like weasel out of the depth. So press forward, knee really over your ankle as long as you can and without knee pain. If either your front or your back knee hurts, then make the, bring the feet closer together. All right, activate the low belly, widen the space between your shoulders, smile and stretch your lower arm, your left arm to me. Advanced version, I've heard from a few great teachers, is to smile in the pose. All right, now scoot your back foot forward. Oh look, a handy table. So you can put your hand on your table or onto the floor for half moon pose. The back foot toes are pointing towards me. And then you can rotate your chest to the sky. And if you've got it in you, upper arm to the sky and gaze to the sky. I'm feeling wobbly on this side, so I'm going to look at the floor and pick a focused spot a drishti, but you can also pick a focus on the ceiling. Now, bend your knee a little, place both hands on the floor, table, chair, whatever, and turn your hips. Stretch your back leg and the toes should point right at the ground. And then if you can, stretch the standing leg again. And if, for example, if you feel a little pressure in your lower back, that's definitely a sign to raise your upper body onto just a higher level. And then you can bow forward, lift your back heel to the sky. I forgot to say this on the other side. For, for those of you who are more flexible, you may enjoy bringing one hand to your left ankle or both hands. Woo! I'll just let you do that. And then set both feet down. Come up to standing. All right, we're gonna do my favorite pose, my official favorite pose, it's pigeon. So inhale, arms up, exhale, bow. Inhale, half forward fold. Exhale, plank, or you can go straight to dog. I'm gonna do a flow through. If you're tired, go to dog pose, slowly lower down. Inhale, cobra, and exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, you're right up to the sky. Exhale, pigeon. That means your right knee comes to your right hand. I'm going to turn to you to show that. 
So the right knee is right behind your right hand. Your hips should be on the same level. For a rare human, they're both on the floor. Mine are in the air. Some people are higher and then they feel much more comfortable if they put something under the right hip, like a block or a pillow or something. But try not to do this, but really have your hips on the same level, parallel to the floor. You can move your right foot anywhere from touching your left hip to parallel to your front knee. And that depends on the depth of the stretch. So just look for a level that is exciting but compassionate. That is not too much for you. And now draw your knees lightly towards each other. Reactivate the fire in the belly. Draw your belly a little up and back. And then bow forward. You can have your hands, elbows, or forehead on the floor. And if you want to go a little deeper, keep your legs active. Don't just flop into the pose, but slide your back knee back. Breathe in and out through your nose. If you know it, bring some ujjayi breathing into this. And here, let's practice. It's a gentle version of what we'll need in crow. Lift your belly towards the sky and let your heart sink towards the floor. So you've got fierce belly and an open heart. And metaphorically, the, the chakras around the belly area, it's a lot about setting boundaries, standing up for yourself or other people, and being consistent, being disciplined and powerful. So activate that belly. Think about what you feel fierce about. But we don't want to get bitter and closed and only fierce. So for that, we really need to melt the heart down. Relax the neck, relax the skin of your face. I know, there are no muscles in your skin. For me, it's a useful metaphor to soften the skin of the face. And then slowly rise up onto your hands. Move your right foot back. And then we're going to go into a thigh stretch. So the next pose is to stretch the front of the left leg and belly. Again, draw the knees together. Lift your belly up and you will probably start to feel a thigh stretch there. And if you want to go further, put your right hand on your right knee, lift your back leg and grab it with your left hand. First, you take the outer foot. I'm going to turn sideways. Y'all keep breathing. First, you take the outer foot. Then if you can go deeper, you take the inner foot and pull it forwards, not towards your tailbone, but towards the outer left hip. And if you've got it in you, lift your right arm up to the sky. So I really mean it seriously. You shouldn't do everything that I do in the pose, you should go to the level that feels good and stay there. So you might be here, feeling a stretch in the front of your left thigh. Cool. Oh, it ran out of power. All right, so breathe. And slowly release that. We're going to come into downward facing dog. Don't forget to claw your fingers. Inhale your right leg up and back. Bend the right leg and let it kind of hang over the left of your body. Open your right knee to the sky. And then set your right foot down. Feel both sides. Hopefully there's a contrast. And then inhale your left leg up and back. Exhale to pigeon. So again, your left knee is behind your left hand. Move your left foot forward or back as you need to behind your right hand. And then make sure your back heel is pointing straight up at the sky and not to the outside or inside. Can't really see that on me. And draw the knees together. Lift your low belly. Bow your heart forward. So belly to the sky chest softening and moving down. Don't get too chill because we're still going to do crow. But it's really important for crow pose to have your hips open because it's actually a pretty deep flexion in both hips when you do crow. So if you do it near the beginning of a practice, your, the muscles in your hips that haven't opened up yet will hold you back a little bit. Slowly rise up onto your fingertips. Draw your knees towards each other, lift your low belly, 
Try to find a stretch in the front of your right thigh, hip, and uh, the lower right belly. That's your psoas muscle, which is very nice to stretch. Very good for lower back health. And then if you like, left hand on the left knee, grab your right foot. Breathe. I'm rotating. Got my double mat set up today. And I forgot to say you may want to move your left foot back a little bit to make this thigh stretch easier. So you can start with your right hand on the outer right foot. If you feel you can go deeper, put it on the inside and draw it forward. Obviously as far as you want. <laughs> Inhale your left arm to the sky. Woo! If it's too wobbly, put it back down. Lower belly active, fire in the belly, opening the chest, and then slowly release. Place your hands down, downward facing dog, and then sweep your left leg up and back. Bend the knee, let the toes hang down over towards the right. Your left hip is really open. You're not trying to keep your hips in alignment, parallel to the floor anymore. And then both feet down. All right, come to your knees. Come to your knees and uh, place your hands on the floor in front of you. We're gonna crow. So the first version, very user friendly. The main thing is to spread your hands, you've heard it enough now, claw the fingertips into the floor, ground the inner hands, and then let your heart sink down a little and activate your belly. Now let's redo that with the toes on the ground. So your balls of your feet are on the ground. Lift your knees as high as you can up into your armpit area, and then lift up your booty. Lift your low belly and let your heart melt and your weight shift forward. This is version one. It's a lot of work. It's a great preparation for curl, and you don't have to lift your feet up if you don't feel comfortable. So from the side, the weight shift looks like this. You're just kind of floating forward. Keep your gaze forward rather than down or back. Lift your low belly and let your heart sink. That's version one. Practice it a lot. If you feel comfortable going further, lift one foot for five breaths and then switch. Lift the other foot for five breaths. Okay, I gotta take off my shirt because I'm slipping down my arms. And now we're gonna do version three. I'll do it like diagonal. So fingertips spread, claw the fingertips into the floor, knees way up high, lift your hips and glide forward. Lift your low belly and let your heart sink. It makes a lot more freedom in the shoulders and neck. And then just keep your weight going forward until maybe your toes float up. If they do, press the balls of your feet or your whole inner feet together. And breathe. And smile. All right, give that a try. Or you, again, you can be practicing version one the whole time, version two, which is just lifting one foot, or version three. There is a version four. I don't know if I can demonstrate this well, but I will be able to explain it because, because I've done it before. Back when I spent more time each day doing yoga. <sighs> so please stay with us, keep practicing, whichever variation feels good to you. Oh, I also wanna say, I used to be super scared that I would face plant in crow. And um, so I would put like a giant pile of blankets in front of me. I will use this pillow to symbolize that. And it made me feel better. And then one day I did tip forward and I fell on the side, I fell on my shoulder and was completely uninjured. So it was one of those, um, the fear is worse than the actual thing. But if you have that concern, get a pile of pillows and it might make you feel better. Or you can, if you have a human around, you can also ask them to put their hands right in front of your shoulders, not touching you because you won't be able to get your balance in case you fall forward. Okay, so here's the, I think we're on version four. See if I can do it. Place your hands, claw the fingertips, press the inner hands down. Now again, where are we fierce? Think of your fierce thing. In the hands and in the low belly and lift that low belly way up. And then we gotta be kind of open that we don't know what's gonna happen even when we care deeply. Let the chest sink forward. And then 
get into crow and lift your low belly higher and higher and try to stretch your arms and slide your, woo, slide your knees up as high as you can. So I'm kind of resting with my knees on my upper arms, but there is a version where you have fully stretched arms and your knees are right here. So see if you can get to that if you're already really comfortable with crow. I'll play around some more. So you're doing your version at home. All right. Wonderful. So if you're ready for a rest, you could do some child's pose now, a beautiful child's pose. And otherwise, if you don't have any neck issues, well, the tension is okay, but if you don't have slip discs or a lot of neck pain, then let's try the crow clown flow. Um, we're going to start in crow pose and then just slowly set your head down. You don't want to put the back of your head on the floor. Want to tend towards the middle or even up to the hairline because that'll preserve the curve in your neck, which is really uh, safe, safer. All right, it's gonna be my last crow, crow pose for the day. I don't know about y'all. So place your hands, claw your fingertips, or you you can watch. Lift your hips way up. Lift your low belly and melt your heart. And bring your fierce vision into your eyes, into the, your inner eye. Come into crow pose. And then once you get there, slowly set your forehead down. And roll a little onto the top of your head. Clown. Activate the low belly, smile. And if you like, you can go up into a tripod headstand from here if you feel comfortable with that and then slowly come back down. And here's my favorite part is the lifting back up. Sometimes works. Press your uh, balls of your feet together and slowly look forward, activate your belly. And sometimes you can even stay longer than that and crow. Otherwise you just tip up gracefully. And now I'm really into celebrating like everything possible lately celebrating small victories. So literally whatever level you did, even if you just watched the whole crow demo, I want you to celebrate the efforts that you're making today, taking the time to do yoga, just do your little inner secret victory dance, pat yourself on the back, take a moment for that. If we wait to celebrate the really big achievements, we won't remember how to celebrate when they come. We gotta celebrate something every day. All right, come to a cross-legged sitting position. We're gonna wind down. That was our last sweaty pose. Inhale, make your back really long and then set your fingertips down behind you for a tiny back bend. Lift your chest up to the sky, look up. Inside it looks like this. Yours might be even deeper, that's fine. You could put your hands flat. Make a lot of length in your spine, especially your lower back, and open the chest. <sighs> and then we're gonna do a twist. So inhale, start with twisting to the right. Turn your belly to the right, your chest, place your left hand on your right knee, and your right hand behind your body. Use both arms to push yourself up, get really tall and then use both arms to push yourself deeper into the twist. Don't worry about your head. You don't need to turn your head really far. Um, this twist is about everything between the shoulders and the hips. So just make your neck comfortable. <sighs> Breathe through both nostrils. Try to be really sensitive to the feeling of the air flowing in and out. Inhale back to the middle. Exhale to the left side. Push yourself tall with your arms and then turn deeper into the twist. Draw both shoulders lightly back and try to bring more softness to the front of your chest. Come back to the middle and then inhale. And now we're going to do a forward bend, but the one variation of the forward bend is hands behind you, 
back really straight. So if this creates any sense of stretching in your legs and hips, then that is your pose. If you can go deeper, you can walk forward with your hands. Keep your lower belly active. It's really in almost all poses, makes sense. And let your heart soften down. Keep your spine long, so it's not about getting your forehead to the floor. Although if that happens, with a long, comfortable spine, that's fine. You'll notice this is probably really asymmetrical in the hips. We we're going to do the other side. So really feel that. What does it feel like in my left hip, in my right hip? Can I lengthen more between my tailbone and the crown of my head? And we'll slowly rise up. Or if you're in the mini back bend, just switch the legs and continue. Otherwise, bowing forward. It's a really important thing to balance our, our deep, steadfast desires with letting go, that we do not know how these things will be fulfilled or how they'll develop, and we cannot control it. And the desire is valuable, and the letting go of the desire is the balance to it. It's equally valuable. And again, in the body today, we're locating the desire in the belly and the release in the heart. So here again, for example, if like me, you have your elbows on the ground, you can let your heart sink down, soften your face, and breathe. And then slowly rise up. And we're going to do a short meditation to end. And if it's not really comfortable for you to sit on the floor, you can put a pillow under your booty or sit in a chair with both feet flat on the floor. Or you can lay down in kind of a shavasana position. Place your hands on your lap or your legs. Close your eyes. And find your natural breath. Feel how your body feels. If you notice differences compared to the beginning of the class when we sat and felt our bodies and our breath. Register those differences. How does it feel? Now we're gonna count our breaths. This is um, the first formal meditation technique I learned when I was 14. My stepfather gave me a Zabutan meditation pillow and it had like a little flyer with some meditation techniques in it. I think it was Zen, and um, this is one of them. So you're going to count your breaths with each inhalation and exhalation being a complete cycle. So it'll be like this. Inhale one, exhale one. Inhale two, exhale two. Inhale three, exhale three. Continue counting like this until you reach 10 or forget to count and then start again at 1. Inhaling and exhaling from 1 to 10. If you reach 10 or lose track, begin again at the number one. Counting and breathing. Counting 
and breathe in. There is no wrong way to practice. Only keep returning to one. Inhale one, exhale one. Release the counting. Feel your breath and body and the state of your mind. Observing without judging and curiosity and friendliness towards yourself. Bring your hands together in front of your heart and draw your focus there as well. Center of your chest. Focusing down on the ground, slowly open your eyes with a soft gaze. And then let your gaze widen to take in the whole. Thank you for practicing with me today. Have a lovely week. So thanks for joining me again. I'm Rachel Brooker and this is Taria Yoga. This was Rocking the Crow Pose and please like the video, subscribe. All of this helps a YouTube channel in complex ways that I don't fully understand but it is quite important and it does make a difference for us. Um, so if you have a, an account please do those things and write down below in the comments what you would like to practice, learn, focus on in the next video. And I wish you a wonderful, healthy, sane, kind week. Namaste.